Hello everyone, I'm Gary York, CorruptionBehindBars.com. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel today. The other day I put out a short YouTube video thanking all my subscribers for helping me get past 800 subscribers. And I also ask my subscribers to tell me what they want to hear. Tell me or give me some topics that you want to hear my opinion on. And I have several now. And today I'm going to do the first one. The request is from Sergeant... Roy Spaulding of the Florida Department of Corrections. Sergeant Spaulding, congratulations on your promotion, and I'm so glad to hear it, and I'm so proud of you, and I want everybody uh, out there to please say hello and congratulate Sergeant Roy Spaulding of the Florida Department of Corrections. He has asked me to do a video on inmate manipulation, I know a lot of you say, well, heck, I know when an, when an inmate's trying to manipulate me, and I know what to do, but that's not the case all the time. We have many people naive to the trap that inmates set for inmate manipulation. We even have people with 15, 20, and 25 years who fall into the trap of inmate manipulation. Look at the 30-year sergeant at the Denimore prison in upstate New York who along with Joyce Mitchell the uh, sewing teacher this 30-year officer helped these two inmates escape from Denimora in upstate New York so we've had cases with people with many many years fall to the inmate manipulation trap so don't walk around and think that you're too solid or too smart to fall for inmate manipulation because any of you have been who have been in this business for a while you've been manipulated by an inmate let's be honest we've all been manipulated by an inmate not to the point of being criminal but maybe to the point of being tricked into an extra drink or an extra food or something that they got. The TV turned on or left on for 30 minutes extra. You know, all these little things. We're not talking about hardcore corruption all the time, which does occur from inmate manipulation, but we've all been manipulated. So let's talk about it just a little bit. Uh, the inmates want the correctional officer to feel sorry for them. The inmates want to earn your respect now we're not going to abuse inmates we're going to provide them with the proper care custody and control they need and we're going to give them what they are required to have their medical their dental their food their exercise we're going to save their life if they try to commit suicide we're going to uh, help them if we see them injured we're going to pull other inmates off of in inmates being beaten we're going to we're going to do all these things that we do to protect the inmates but we are not going to allow inmates to manipulate us and the inmates as you well know are looking for a soft target a soft target is someone who comes in with low self-esteem someone who comes in and talks about all their personal problems in front of the inmates and lets the inmates know they're having a rough time on the outside. Someone who comes in in a wrinkled uniform does not have the self-esteem or um, incentive to iron their uniform or shine their shoes. They walk around moping. This is what the inmates are looking for, the weak link in the chain. They're looking for the weak officer that they can manipulate. And then they'll move in and if it's female inmates, they'll go to the male officer and say, well, you're looking very handsome today, Officer Jones. And if it's a male inmate, he'll go to the female officer and say, oh, aren't you looking uh, beautiful today? I love the way you did your hair. Well, immediately, that needs to be stopped. You need to stop the inmate, male inmate or female inmate, and say, hey, don't you worry about how I look. That's not why I'm here to show you how I look or you don't need to know uh, worry about how I look you just carry on with your business and move on an inmate may come up to you and say hey I'm 
I'm from your hometown. Remember me? We went to the same high school. I just lived in the street over from your street. And that is the beginning of manipulation, trying to become your friend again, trying to get you to remember the days in high school, the days on the street, become my homie, and maybe try and get extra things from you for sympathy of being an old friend. Well, you better not let that go, and you better document it immediately, and you better report it to your supervisor. Tell your supervisor, I've been approached by M.A. so-and-so. We knew each other in high school. We're from the same neighborhood. So that classification and your supervisor can immediately come in and decide what they're going to do with that inmate. Maybe even a transfer needs to be done. I don't know. It's up to them. But <clears throat> since... Sergeant Spaulding requested this video, and since he is from the Florida Department of Corrections, where I'm from, I am going to copycat a little bit and tell you about you, all about you. I can't take credit for it. The Correctional Compass from the Florida Department of Corrections has some things that all you officers need to read and all you officers need to take heed of. All About You is put out by the Florida Department of Corrections, and I suggest every supervisor in the Florida Department of Corrections get this page and have your staff read it. <clears throat> Questions you need to ask yourself daily, which I think will help sum up. I've given classes on corruption and manipulation, how they, how they intertwine, but they've been 75-minute classes, and I'm trying to give you a 10-minute video today. But you're going to have to take it upon yourself, supervisors and officers, to learn about inmate manipulation and how to stop it. Ask yourself daily, <clears throat> per the compass from the Florida Department of Corrections, am I over-friendly or familiar with the inmates? Do I appear gullible? Do inmates consider me too trusting? Am I excessively sympathetic in my dealings with inmates is my demeanor timid they look for timid officers and then they figure you're an easy target is my enforcement of rules consistent do I do the same for everybody or if an inmate really cleaned the dorm well do I somehow let him get extra food tray from food service a big no-no you've been manipulated Inmates come up to you and say, hey, let me have 30 minutes extra with the TV or let us have 30 minutes extra and we'll do this. Be careful. Televisions in the dorms have started riots. We had one at DeSoto Correctional Institution that was over a TV because some officers were letting the inmates finish Monday night football. Other officers would not allow them to finish Monday night football. So the inmates started to tear the dorm up and it actually turned into a full fledged prison riot. Stay consistent. Don't worry about what they think. Stay consistent and you'll be a winner. But if you wish wash around and do different every day, you could become a loser. <clears throat> do I handle compliments in a professional or embarrassing manner? Remember, stay professional. We talked about the compliments earlier. Do I share personal problems with inmates? Or do I talk about personal problems around inmates with fellow officers where they can hear? Very big and can cause a lot of trouble. I've done a lot of investigations where inmates overheard officers in trouble financially and helped the officers out. And the officers later lost their jobs, ended up on felony probation, and definitely had no money then and no medical or dental for their family. Have I been known to forget to check the validity, the v validity of an inmate stories or the inmate's information? You don't have to believe everything the inmate tells you. Check it. Don't be afraid to check and see if the inmate's stories match what's really going on in the dorm. Do I sometimes let issues slide that should be addressed immediately? Stay consistent. Don't let the little things slide. The little things can turn into big things. Do I have difficulty with command, control, or saying no? There we go again, back to the saying no. 
it's okay to say no. Remember, inmates are only allowed what the prison allows them to have. Okay? Anything not in writing by procedure or policy for the inmates to be able to have is considered contraband. If you bring food or gum to an inmate under Florida Statute 944.47, you've committed a felony. Now, that doesn't mean the state attorney will always prosecute for food or gum, but it is a felony, and it's that way in most states in the country. You can lose your job over that, possibly criminal charges, depending on the amount and how long you've been doing it, what you're getting in return for it. Do I circumvent minor rules? That falls into what we just talked about. Can I be made to feel obligated? Don't let the inmates make you feel obligated. And am I easily distracted by the inmates? Remember, inmates will try to get you in a conversation on this side of the dorm so they can commit their dirty deeds on the other side of the dorm. Have your head on a swivel, as we called it in the military. Have eyes in the back of your head. Be alert to your surroundings. Don't walk around with your head down. Walk around and look and watch and listen. Sometimes you never have to say a word. Just look, watch, listen, and you'll learn a lot what's going on in the dorm. There is so much to talk about with inmate manipulation, but if you ask yourself those questions I just asked you, all about you from the Florida Department of Corrections, Correctional Compass, if you ask yourself those questions every day and you make sure you're not doing those things or falling into those traps, you should come out with a great career, promotions, and a retirement. Thank you, Sergeant Roy Spaulding. I hope that helps, and I hope that people take heed to the many things that involve inmate manipulation, and there's a continuing education going on. Thank you very much, Corruption Behind Bars. If you like this video, please subscribe.